Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster who's just uh, slowing it down here. Uh, slowing down your day into your evening. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And if you're a regular listener, it really can perk up for a few minutes uh, because it's just the beginning of the episode. Uh, because these are the ways we keep the show going. Or if you can remember, when your hand hits that fridge tomorrow, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Uh, that's how we keep the show free for you and everybody else. Thanks. Uh, hey, everybody. Before we get to the story here, you might have heard the update. You know, the show's crossed some milestones, 800 episodes. Uh, show's impacted hundreds and hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people, and allowed them to get a good night's sleep. And really, that is because of, uh, like, the the people that have taken action to support the show. The rebels with their cause that have said, sleep with me is valuable to me. It's a part of my life. And I want to be it out. I want it to be out there, free in the world. And coming up here in uh, September, we're going to be doing something really fun. So if you've ever been a patron, whether you are one now or you were one in the past, or you want to become one, uh, do it now, but before September fifteenth, because uh, that's when we're. That's going to be the cutoff date for this exciting thing we're doing. Uh, but really, uh, just become a patron if you're in a position to do so financially you really do feel like you get value out of the podcast and you want it to be free for everybody and be there when you need it. And you feel like, you know, being wild, you say, well, yeah, I pay all these corporations monthly fees. So let me pay for a podcast I get a lot out of uh, that's there for me. And I want it to be there for other people too. It's really generous. So those of you that have already done that or have done it in the past, thank you so much. Like I do say it and I think it's easy to, kind of tuning out, this podcast wouldn't be here without you, without your action. I'm really indebted to you uh, because you are the wind in my sails. You are the water uh, that, you know, waters the soil or whatever, uh, the the nutrients uh, that allow the the, the seed to grow. Uh, So thank you so much. And if you're, you know, if you're you're newer or you uh, say, oh, wait a second, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about becoming a patron, uh, you do it between now and September 15th so you can get in on this thing we're going to be doing. It's going to be fun and it's going to be celebratory. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just wanted to thank you so much. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patrons, how you become a rebel with the cause. Thanks. All right, everybody. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. And, actually, this is a pre-Sleepy Supporter Zone uh, because uh, – our new sponsor, Native Deodorant, uh, is so amazing. I can't, I cannot believe. Like you probably hear my next sponsor read. Like I've never been more impressed uh, with a, a deodorant and product in general. And I really want to make this fun for everybody. So share with me online, uh, whether it's Instagram or uh, Twitter. I'm at Dear Scooter or on our Facebook page. Uh, check out all the the the, the scents over at NativeDeodorant.com. And if you want, use the promo code SLEEP to get 20% off your first purchase. Uh, but go there, pick out some scents, and then tag me in Native and let me know uh, which one you want. And I'll start thinking about what how I'm going to smell in August. Uh, because right now I'm rocking the coconut and vanilla, and I love it. But I'm looking at all these other scents, and I said, geez, let the listeners vote. Uh, so do it online. Uh, and then let me know when you support Native. Uh, NativeDeodorant.com. Use Sleep at Checkout for 20% off your first purchase. And then share with me so I can thank you right here in the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, uh, you you help out in the show. So do a lot of other people. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. And edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Her honor, honor. Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer, these are your numbers.
Thanks, Mystery Bard. Song.jonathanman.net to commission a song from the Mystery Bard. And I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. Remember, if your podcast doesn't work for you, sleep with me podcast.com slash no thank you. And that's it. Let's get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's a thoughts, feelings, a physical sensa- sensations, maybe singular sensations. Uh, now I'm too, like, <laughs> thoughts, uh, feelings. I was just laughing because that's like a, one singular sensation. Uh, let's then that I think that's also the lullaby of old Broadway. Okay, going off topic. Okay, so whatever's keeping you up, that's my main thing. So if you're thinking about stuff, if you're feeling stuff, if you're experiencing any anything, got anything going on situationally, or you know, just looking for a company, you're looking for a boyfriend, you found it. Because uh, what I'm going to do, I got this safe place ready for you here. And prepared. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use a lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tone. So it's creaky. I don't even know how to spell that. Dulcet. Uh, it's a little bit rusty, a little bit uh, sweet. Uh, uh, superfluous meanders, extra words. I'm going to go, you know, whatever I just said. When, like uh, remembering old TV commercials, they say, what else? We're like, we're just kind of trying to come up with that sleep with me formula. That's what people say sometimes, uh, like in my imagination. And they say, what is that? Cayenne? No, no, there's no cayenne in there. Okay. So you got the creaky dulcet tones. You got the rusty meanders. Doesn't make any sense. Point like circular stuff or ovular. And uh, what else is in there? Oh, uh, old com- old TV shows and commercials and everything I've ever absorbed in my entire life is what's in there. Uh, sent through a lens of, uh, that's, that, okay, you turn that one around on me. That's not really, uh, well, yeah, I didn't realize we were interviewing ourselves. But so let's take it to the new listener. So if you're new, I'm glad you're here. A couple things to know. This podcast is different. So if you're already like, what is this? Uh, or you checked it out, you say, what is this supposed to put me to sleep? Uh, I don't understand what that means, you know, those kind of things. I totally understand. If you're skeptical or you're a little bit on edge or you're, you're like, uh, I'm not sure about this dude. Uh, I just want to acknowledge it's a very common experience. So give the show a few tries. I'll just try to prepare you in a couple of ways. Like this intro and the show in general it kind of never really uh, comes together in a clear way. I mean, it does. Uh, if you're a regular listener, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's not some kind of instant sleep fix or some sort of uh, kind of sleep thing that's like uh, just falls into place. It's uh, it's just different, and it's meant to kind of keep you company as you drift off. And I thought I'd be able to explain it better, but, you know, I've been doing this a while, and I still haven't figured out an easy explanation so I just tell you, if you're new, I want, I'm trying to help. It doesn't work for everybody. So see how it goes. Uh, also, since you're new, I want to prepare you for structure, which the show starts off with business. And I'm so grateful to the regular listeners that support the sponsors and support the show, because that's how I'm able to have the podcast here free for you. So thank you to them. Then there's an the intro. Now, the intro is around 12 to 15 minutes or so. And you say, well, that's a pretty long intro. What do you do, what do, you do in that intro? Eh, not much. <laughs> you see, what, like, is it called, is it, what's it called, uh, like, uh, spinning your thumbs? Is that called, tw- like, uh, where you say, I'm just spinning my thumbs or whatever. I think there's another word for that, but I can't think of it. You, you say, well, yeah, yeah, the intro is kind of uh, a show within a show. And what's really designed for is uh, helping you ease you into bedtime. Like some listeners start it while they're getting ready for bed, and some listeners start it when they're in bed. 
And then a few listeners skip it and go straight to the story. If you want to skip it, just set the show to start at like 18, 20 minutes. Or you become a patron and you just get story-only episodes in the feed. But um, it, but for most people, they say, well, it takes a little time to get ready for bed. That's a, It's kind of like a thing, like, of course, we want to fall asleep right away. And, it, like, so I'm trying to ease you into bedtime uh, wherever you're starting the show. So basically the intro is that. It's like... Uh, Scoots, when you get to get a gig, gonna get to the point. Well, when I can pronounce, uh, gonna get to the point, uh, I'll probably still talk for four or five more minutes about, uh, stuff, and then, uh, then we'll get to the, uh, like a random Tuesday style episode, which we only call a Tuesday style episode because it, we used to come out on Tuesdays. Now it comes out on Sunday or, Wednesday, and that just means it's kind of a random potpourri style episode. So that's the intro. Then there'll be the episode, like I said, it'll be like a little bit of a bedtime story. And then there'll be some thank yous at the end. And there's some business tucked between the intro and the story. Uh, so that's structurally what to expect. Also, you're under no pressure to listen to me or to fall asleep. Uh, so this is weird because it's a sleep, it's a podcast and it's a sleep podcast. And you'd say, well, the most essential thing, definition of a podcast is something you listen to. And I'd say, well, is it something you listen to or something you hear or something you're vaguely aware may be playing, but you may not be hearing it or listening. You could just be in its presence, uh, and they'd say, well, that won't work. From And I'd say, yeah, this is the one podcast you could say, well, I'm in your presence. Uh, and that's kind of the social deal. Like, uh, too, it's like, uh, imagine, I mean, this is really the role I hope the podcast feel, f- fills and feels like. Imagine you had someone in your life uh, and they were totally, like, they were on call. And you had a total, like, first of all, you said, what well, you could, like, you, you, they were just a, a person you felt very comfortable around. But then you also had an agreement uh, that they would put you to sleep without any expectations on their end. So it's like, uh, okay, you just come over or I'll call you. Tell me about your day or tell me about something, about some comics you read. Uh, but I'm at some point I'm going to stop listening and also, I'm not going to humor you and be like, oof, tell, oh boy, really? So it was Kelvin and Hobbes and, oh boy, tell, oh boy, keep going. Was it, uh, was it a Sunday or a weekday? Was it one of the weekday ones that had, was this in a newspaper or a dream? Like, you don't have to do humor. Like, so it'd be like, okay, so you're just going to talk and I can fall asleep. And you don't, you, you say, yeah, that's how it works, uh. I don't know what I was trying to explain other than, oh, so, so no pressure to listen and no pressure to fall asleep. Oh, yeah, so you, that's what I mean. The podcast is present for you, but you don't have to hear it or uh, listen to it. And the same thing with no pressure to fall asleep. The shows are about an hour, a little bit over an hour, so you could drift off whenever you need to, or you could line up uh, episode after episode, as a lot of our patrons do. They'll listen to like eight episodes in a night. And uh, that way, like you say, or you might wake up at two or three and you say, okay, I need to start the episode again. So however you choose to listen, you'll kind of discover, but there's no pressure to sleep because I'm going to be here the whole time. And I make this show just as much for the people that are listening that they can't sleep at all. Uh, That's why I'm here to the very end. It's the people that fall asleep in two minutes, uh, but the episode is still playing and somehow helping you stay asleep. So that's a little bit about the structure of the show and what to expect. I'm trying to think of like, uh, oh, I was talking about those old commercials. Uh, what did I say? I was, now I just have the, like, uh, what was it? One singular sensation. This show does not have a singular sensation. It's like uh, some people would say, well, it's singularly boring. And I'd say, well... But do we have a singular sensation? Because we got a creaky dulcet tones going off topic, uh, keeping you company. I think that's like if we, but I don't think, uh, I wonder what they were referring to. Is that the chorus line that song's from? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, my memory's not so good. That's another thing in general. 
So I say, well, I mean, again, I, I just remember those songs from being on a commercial for the Milford Plaza on WPIX, uh, like in the 80s or early 90s. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I don't know. If Here's the thing. If you can't sleep, I want to help. Uh, and I want to help you fall asleep. I've been there. And that's one of the major re- main reasons I make this show is because they say, well, it would have been, you know, it would be nice or it would have been nice when I was a kid and I couldn't sleep. Uh, just to have someone come in and say, hey, it seems like you can't sleep. That stinks. Uh, yeah. And they say, well, I, I, I don't know. Is there a way I could help you? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, what if I just sit here and keep you company? You think that would help? Uh, I don't know. Right, I don't know either. Maybe even if it doesn't help you sleep, at least I'll be here to keep you company, huh? Yeah, I guess. Maybe I could just talk about something inane and uh, uh, pleasant. Uh, okay, but just don't talk about WPIX commercials again. Okay, why? Why? Oh, well, then that just makes me think about uh, why. You know, I don't know. I was just, like, uh, trying to throw you uh, for a loop uh, Okay, well, I'll just, like, I'll be here, and I can tuck in a little bit there and say, get comfortable, get in there. Get, oh, yeah, get, I like, uh, wow, I really like that pillow technique you're doing. What do you call that? They call it a twist and puff. Ooh, twist and puff, I like that. What is that you're doing with your elbow? Oh, yeah, I call that uh, bed scooping. I, I don't know, it Just I think it just helps me get it comfortable. Sure, and and I did notice your big toe on your right foot is kind of rubbing. It's almost like you're digging in your bed with your right toe. Yep, I do that too. It makes, I don't know, I like it. It's soothing. Cool. Well, I'm really learning a lot just being here watching you get in bed and fall asleep. Yeah, so you're just going to be, yeah, because I know you can't sleep. I know, and here's the thing, I believe you deserve a good night's sleep. I believe you deserve to be treated with dignity and respect, and uh, I'm just here to help. I mean, mean, and the thing is, I know you say, well, I just wish uh, I could have an instant on-call person to do that, and you say, well, I don't know if that's uh, an option. You know, everybody, yeah, everybody's got to get sleep too, huh? Yeah, that's why I make make this podcast, and you can just use it on demand when you need it. Huh. What's it like? Uh, so I just pre- get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play, huh? Yeah, or you could do that in any order, but uh, that just is the way I used to always say it. So it's kind of like a well worn pathway. Okay, great. Well, thanks for being here and uh, keeping me company. No problem. I'm glad to be here to keep you and everyone else company that's listening. And like I said, if you're new, give the show a few tries, uh, see how it goes. Um, 90. 95% of listeners say it took two or three tries before I started regularly listening to the show. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate your time. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive because I want to help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we keep the show going. Uh, hey, everybody. I was wondering if I have a couple updates for you. Uh, the show has crossed uh, some big milestones. Uh, like uh, it's about to. When I'm recording this, we're getting close to 800 episodes. A, a few months ago, we crossed 100 million downloads, and that that was uh, free to everybody. You know, that's the kind of thing I've been talking about lately, and that's because of those of you that have taken action. Uh, you, those of you that are patrons uh, in particular, and maybe you're listening, you say, hey, I'm a patron. This is cool. And if you're not a patron, you know, maybe you supported the show some other ways. We're, we're going to do something really fun in September to celebrate it. Uh, uh, so keep your ears out. Uh, but if you are a patron or you've been thinking about it, you're kind of on the fence or you have been a patron, you're a big, big, big part of that uh, because it is the primary way we've kept the show free for everybody. Uh, that and the people that support the sponsors. It is wild, is wildly rebellious to pay for a free podcast, uh, but it really is like you're making a sacrifice uh, for your own self-care and then actually supporting the care of thousands of other people. And that's kind of the definition of creating community. Like, I really do use the analogy like a community garden. Like, anyone could come to this podcast and come and take with, you know, for in this case, the sleepy stuff they need. Uh, but the ability to, to keep the community garden open, to have the supplies and the labor that goes into maintaining it, that's because of you patrons and you people that support the sponsors. Uh, 
And there's nothing wrong with choosing or not being in a position to do so. Uh, But those of you that did take action, it is something worthy of celebrating. And I hope if you're listening to this, you could feel really good about it. And you say, well, I was a patron for a little while, but now I can't. Well, you are a huge, huge part of this. And if you did something free, like spread the word about this show, you're a part of this too. You really should feel good. That's like, like, think about that. It's over a hundred million times the podcast has probably been listened to for free when someone needed it. Now, if you're new or you you say, well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm just like trying to get this across to people that say, huh, I I do get a lot of value out of the show. I am rebellious. uh, and I do pay my cable company all this money. What am I doing? If if you if any of that resonates with you, or if you want to become a patron, you could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. I guess that's what I'm saying, if anything resonates with you. I think that's it. I, I thought I had something else. Uh, oh, if you have supported the sponsors or supported the show by spreading the word, you will get a chance to participate in this fun thing we're doing. Don't worry. Just to listen to the Sleepy Supporter Zone uh, coming up. Uh, but I wanted to thank you. Thank you so much for, for helping us re- reach these milestones. Uh, it really, like, I could not have done it without all of you supporting the show and listening and sleeping to it. Uh, thank you. All right, hey, everybody. This is a, a style of show we haven't done in a while. And, you know, so you know, you know it's not easy making a sleep podcast because, like, the main way you support the show is, uh, you, you know, if you put people to sleep, then it gets, uh, it's hard for them to get a message to support the show and how, you know, so, so that, you know, if, if you've been listening to the show for years, you know, it's like never easy. And uh, because they say, okay, the podcast is so good at putting people to sleep, it makes it harder uh, to keep, 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 get the listeners to take action. And, and that's like how podcasting, podcasting is different, like, uh, where it's not a mass medium, so there's no advertising just to hear it. It's always, oh, how many people buy this stuff or, or how many people become patrons, and, and that translates into the budget for the show to keep it going and free. But a long time ago, I made a deal with someone, It kind of like it, that they would, um, uh, like kind of like an advertising deal. It wasn't super lucrative, unfortunately, because it was early on in the podcast, but I did make this deal where they have uh, access to the podcast occasionally. And actually, they were smart because they got in early. And then I say, are you going to run one of these episodes uh, anytime soon? And they say, not right now. Because they were waiting as the podcast has grown and grown and grown because of all the wonderful listeners like you who spread the word just naturally. And also, I don't know a lot about this. Like, usually now I say, okay, well, you could work with the show. That's great. Let me check out what you get, you know, like, uh, like, uh, let me check your product out or let me check you out. This is like a mysterious, it's just a seminar company. I guess it's not that mysterious. And much like the podcast, they wanted people to succeed. And I think they built their business model. Their business model is bore to win. It's bore to win seminars and, uh, and I think they now they call it Board of, Board of Win Life Enrichment LLC or something uh, was the last notice they sent me when they said, okay, we'd like to run another episode. And unfortunately, I didn't know what it like. I don't know what it's about. Uh, like, luckily, they're coming here to record it. Uh, uh, but it's usually they're pretty relaxing. So it actually has worked out. It just hasn't worked out for me because they said, well, it's like only – that doesn't even pay for the editing of the episode, like, but whatever, you know, it's an early deal. It's good content, uh, I believe. Though, those usually even I snooze through these episodes. Uh, though I did say, "What are you going to be talking about tonight?" And they said, "Oh, well, we would prefer to like you just could hear it." Uh, so I guess without further ado, I think it's Brad Bradderson is uh, the person that runs it. And, uh, yeah, I guess so, like, I'm going to turn things over to Brad Bradderson from Board of Win Life Enrichment Industries uh, is what it says here. If you're looking for health, wealth, ha- health, wealth, happiness, oh, I, I don't know if I could say that, uh, good abs. Uh, okay, oh, you said that was optional talk. Well, I already said it now. Health, wealth, happiness, possibly, can we just put question mark abs? Brad's nodding here because I don't, I don't know. That's just, I think that's like not true. Like, uh, okay, well, oh, do you, but everybody's a fan of abs? Well, I wouldn't say everybody's a fan of abs. Uh, I mean, 
like I think aspiration, like like it's a that's just another aspirational thing. Not to quibble, Brad. Uh, great, great to have you back. Uh, so if you're looking, I never actually investigated the health, wealth, or happiness parts of the, your your slogan either. But we're proud to present another seminar from Boardwin uh, Life Enrichment Enterprises. Uh, and here's Brad Bradderson. Uh, take it away, Brad. Well, hello, everyone. This is Brad Bradderson here. Thank you, Scooter. And thanks for having me in your ears. I really appreciate it. And we're here from Boardwin Life Enrichment Enterprises uh, to uh, help you on the path to health, wealth, and happiness. Smiles. Uh, you, you know, we're in the, in the, the uh, elusive, elusive search, uh, you know, for that 60, 40, 80, 20 mix, uh, we're here to support you on that journey. We're here to unlock the empowering secrets of boredom and to the paths that, that boredom leads to. And we're going to do that today with, a, we have a new product we're launching and those of you that have already become part of the uh, the Bordewin Life Enrichment uh, Society, you know the membership is currently closed. So those you got that got in on the now it may reopen at some unknown point in the future. Uh, but those of you that became members early on, you're in a great position because you'll have a first access. Uh, to what we're going to let, I guess you also, the people that listen to the podcast, you're getting this free and this will be our premium product. Eventually it'll go behind the, the secret, uh, within to the board of win life enrichment enterprises, uh, and industries. We're discussing industries versus enterprises. Uh, it'll go behind our paywall. And I know, uh, you, you already listened to a podcast, a sleep podcast called sleep with me. And uh, uh, Scooter happens to be friends with Craig and Harris uh, from Sleep Whispers podcast. Also know he's a big fan of uh, Justin McElroy, who has the Empty Bowl podcast. And I know Scooter likes uh, bedtime stories for Re Rebel Girls. And he's exchanged nice emails with Otis from Sleepy Podcast. And there's a whole industry of uh, sleep, sleep, sleep and sleepy related podcasts. Uh, in that now there's businesses in it. And we said to ourselves here at Board of Win Enterprises, we, we already have uh, plenty of uh, nearly free advertising and sleep with me. And as we see more and more companies begin to, to, to say, well, what is this sleep with me? Uh, and we see divergent things. You know, Scooter's been trying to get Trader Joe's to advertise on his podcast. And they say, oh, we don't want to advertise on podcasts. Uh, we said, well, maybe this just isn't Scooter's just not, you know, maybe Scooter just needs to keep making sleep with me. And they say, is this a cottage industry? Well, we're going to find out because we're going to empower you today uh, to create your own seminar. Now, this is not based on any of Scooter's techniques, uh, but we have at uh, Board of Wind Labs, uh, which you could tour Board of Wind Labs if you're a member of the uh, Board of Wind uh, Life Enrichment Society, uh, that does come with uh, being able to purchase those tickets is only available to members. And uh, if the membership reopens, you would be able to tour board, board of win uh, labs uh, where you see what we're doing. We're pushing the edges of boredom uh, as a part of life. You know, and they say one day, you know, all these other you know, we do we we do believe in the uh, Carol Dweckian philosophies of uh, mindset and having a boredom embracing growth mindset, uh, but we're just focusing on boredom. You know, other people are you know doing other stuff. Neuroscience. We have neuroscientists uh, who are aware of our existence uh, and all of the other things. Uh, but so we've been working. Listening. We, we now we did uh, we we did we we did purchase. Uh, uh, well, we sublet it to some space on uh, some uh, like uh, those uh, machine learning servers. And uh, they say that those are some of those are based on AI. Uh, and uh, we've been looking for the more the AI with the EQ, you know, the, the uh, EI, the, like emotional. Do you have any AI with EI? 
And we've been wor- we've been trying to find, you know, within our budgets, uh, ways uh, to analyze the Sleep With Me podcast through AI uh, to discover why it really works. Cause, and, and then say, well, this would be easily replicable for our enterprise customers and those members of the board of win uh, life uh, enrichment uh, society. And you, dear listeners, you know, j- and mainly j- just to say, Oh, maybe if now you might say, just uh, what is the cost of this life enrichment uh, society you're talking about, uh, Brad? And I'd say, well, how much is it, you know, how much is your en- enriching, you know, a life of enrichment uh, worth to you? Uh, because we do offer, uh, you know, for a hundred K, this was before we closed the membership because of demand. Uh, for a lifetime membership, uh, one-time price for for a lifetime of enrichment of access to enriching products. Uh, now you might say, "Wow, a hundred k! Wow, what a bargain!" Uh, and you would say, "But uh, you know, I don't have that to put to you." I say, "Well, if you're not, you know, the the right, you know, you could spread apart part multiple payments on multiple credit cards." And we're not really here to talk about those things exactly. It's just uh, like, uh, what, what, you know, but the monthly fee is, you know, the, the goal of the monthly fee is to make that pricing look like a deal. So, uh, but you say, well, what, what, how, how could I unlock these? Uh, you now, we, we will tell you that uh, direct income from a sleep pod, you say, well, okay. But it's a way, uh, we, we, we're just working on unlocking the secrets to Scooter's podcast. Uh, and uh, now I could hear him sighing in the other room, and he's muttering that this is totally incorrect and off base. Uh, and you know, but we we feel like we've learned a lot, especially through uh, our our AI bots uh, with a little bit of emotional intelligence. And we have human curators uh, who are wor- who have been working with us. So, so we're going to present uh, how to bo- how to po- pod po- podcasting. Bore to win the board win now we won't be making our own podcast we've thought about that but uh since we have space on scooter show we said well there's a built-in audience uh, ready to hear our message uh and ready to bore to win the podcast edition so let's get started what do you say uh, okay okay hold, hold on here brad i hate to break in on you but what exa- are you trying to uh uh, copy like uh, teach people how to copy my podcast scooter we're looking at expanding the, uh, the 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 great foundation that you started we'd like to just expand on that to you know to, to for-profit corporations uh, startups uh you know maybe solo you know so people solopreneurs entrepreneurs that are involved in our uh our society particularly okay that is uh you're gonna do that on my podcast so well, Scooter, here's a pitch to you. Uh, you could you could be the first to give away all your secrets. Uh, uh, think about, uh, you know, all the greats that have done that. Okay, I don't, like, there's actually no, I'll tell you, Brad, there's actually no secrets to the podcast that I know about. Uh, but do, so do you know, do you think you, you actually, well, this could be actually you, so... Maybe, I could, like, I could use this, because really, Brad, it's not about any of that stuff, right? Scooter, tell me more. Scooter, do you mind if I grab a pen and pencil? Why don't you grab one of those and send it right on, Brad? Because I might just uh, uh, teach you how to board a win, to board a win via podcast. But I'd actually like to, maybe I could improve my podcast uh, because I'm just here to help the people that are listening get some rest and uh, get comfortable, uh, turn out the lights, press play, and. Uh, just be there, keep them company while if they're awake or asleep. Uh, right, Scooter. We just think you're missing out on a great, great opportunity. Did you say great opportunity? What, like, uh, like, uh, I would love a great, an op- I had a grape soda last week. Um, and I like, you know, I've always liked the term grape ape. That was a cartoon. I think, I don't know if it was a character on a cartoon. It was a giant ape uh, who was grape, uh, who was grape, and he was grape ape. Uh, I would love to go to a character greeting 
that said grape opportunity, like an opportunity to get a photo with the grape ape. Okay, Scooter, uh, I don't know if you were doing that on purpose or that was just your natural techniques, uh, but it's good uh, to, so we could work together on this seminar. Uh, listen, Brad, I know I'm kind of contractually obligated to give you this time, and unfortunately I didn't know what I was doing, so I'm contractually obligated to let you uh, say what you are, you know, and you have a final edit on your, your spoken portions and I did, like, now that I have Quinn on my side, like I said, well, I can also uh, say whatever I want. Uh, but, yeah, I think we could work together. This could be a win-win situation because I don't – actually, I don't even know how – I'll be honest with you, Brad. I just told you all the secrets of the podcast earlier. So if you have anything, then I can use it to make my podcast better. Scooter, you'd be boring to win. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the health, wealth, and happiness. I don't think that's unre- like I'd like to flourish, and I'd like my listeners to flourish. Uh, and I think flourishing it becomes something beyond, you know, beyond uh, like it's being instead of asp- aspirate. Do you asp is a uh, aspiration is uh, like uh, the act of as- aspiring aspiration, or is that like when you're uh, breathing through your skin, Brad? Uh, Scooter, I'm not going to take the bait on that. I'd like to uh, to give you one of our talking topics here as we uh, focus on everybody listening to the seminar here when you're sitting down to record. Now, again, and during this particular uh, free presentation, we won't be handling any of the technical aspects, uh, but that will be a part of our elite coaching program that will be available uh, through the society eventually when we reopen membership. Uh, but Scooter, we found that uh, somehow you uh, you toe the line between mediocrity and excellence in some uh, way, and we've started to think about uh, what does that mean. And uh, we we actually we we thought uh, that uh, you you could you, so we, we, Scooter, that was actually well, we're just clarifying. Uh, I thought that was a to- talking topic, Scooter, but now you've almost, uh, you've got me in a, uh, so, okay, so you're saying I'm excellent in my mediocrity? Uh, uh, what, tell me more about if I was, so if I was starting a sleep podcast, uh, how would I be excellent at my mediocrity? Well, Scooter, basically what we're saying is content-wise, it doesn't really matter what you talk about, and, uh, that you just prepare something mediocre and you present it in an excellent way. Now, your excellent way is boring. And, uh, like, uh, you, you, th- th- that's so, so w- w- I guess that was what we're saying. Uh, okay, so you're basically saying, no, 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 Brad, don't worry. I know you could see by the furrowing of my brow I have uh, f- thoughts about this, uh, but they're not all thoughts about involved with you, Brad. So let me uh, talk about this in a way that uh, is open-minded and in and, and, and the spirit of learning. Uh, because I, I think I could see, like, and again, I wonder if I should even be telling any, you this, Brad, but uh, I could see how you'd have that uh, as you, like, uh, if you took apart, a, like, a, okay, let's talk about Ariel from Little Mermaid, right? Okay, Scooter, I thought you were going to tell me about uh, mediocrity and excellence. Uh, okay, well, I think I am eventually. So you're basically saying what, what you're positing is uh, if I deliver something mediocre in an excellent way, uh, that that's kind of the key to the podcast, uh, putting people to sleep, right? Is to say, I could talk about anything or read something or just go off topic. It's really more mostly about the delivery and the style of delivery. And but that's what you're saying, right? And what I'm saying is, uh, I guess I got a couple stories to tell you. So settle in, Brad, uh, get comfortable. And so first off, I was thinking, well, before, like, first I thought I was going to tell you about my neighbor, Billy, when I was growing up. Uh, and, uh, like, uh, one of the people I aspired to be, he was, a, like, a motorcycle. He had a motorcycle. He had multiple motorcycles. He had, uh, 
snowmobiles. He had, uh, uh, he had a dog named Rebel, uh, in, uh, one, 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 more than once upon it. Now, he also had a lot of that stuff in his parents' backyard. And he, he like, uh, he never became a, a, a older brother. He, he was almost like an older brother figure to me, but only like four or five momentary moments in my life. Um, and, uh, but one thing I know was that he was mechanically minded, right? Uh, but he was also, you don't just instantly become mechanically minded. So when you were talking about all that, I have these distinct memories of more than one occasion. Uh, sometimes it was with his own motorcycle. This is when he was in his teens, in his, uh, his teens. Uh, and then one time I think with an outboard motor, like a used outboard motor my dad had bought uh, that stopped working. And Billy said, I'll fix it. And, you know, to fix something, uh, especially something very mechanical, this is before the Internet, Brad, you'd have to take it all apart, right? And also before, I, I guess like here, oh, I guess that brings up a third thing, Brad, uh, is how useful it is to take photos. Like, cause I had to, I've changed the battery and the screen on my phone before. And I think it was one tip the police gave me, but maybe I just learned it or maybe I read it on the internet. It was like, take a picture at every phase as you're taking it apart. So then you know how to put it back together. And they had pictures too, but it's good to take your own pictures. So then you can kind of see, I guess if you're taking apart your phone, you know what I mean though, Brad? Scooter, I, 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 Scooter, I, we have a lot of topics to cover here tonight. Don't worry, Brad. I, I promise this will put your listeners on to health, wealth, and happiness. Oh, boy, will it. Uh, but so Billy took apart this outboard motor on top of a tarp. Uh, so all the parts were on, on the tarp. Uh, all the insides of the outboard motor were now all the parts everywhere. And... Outboard motor's got a lot of parts. It it's a, makes a like a rowboat go. Okay, Brad might be Brad's good. I, so uh, Billy had them all spread out there, and I guess like he was trying to figure out what was wrong with it and how to fix it. Now my dad is not mechanically minded, and he may be. I don't know if he's result based. Uh, I, I I don't think he, like I don't know if he's a dwecky, and I'll tell you that for sure. And I'm sure he was like, uh, he's very, you know, I'm very much like uh, him in the sense that if I was in his shoes and, and at the time and Billy said, oh, something wrong with your motor? Why don't I fix it? I'll do it for 50 bucks or whatever. Or I'll do it for free or I'll do it for a couple of lunches. Uh, I, I would, my gut would say, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but I would say I wouldn't want to displease or say no to Billy. So I'd probably say yes, but then I would be thinking the whole time, oh, no, 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 no. That's kind of the sound of that. That's actually the sound that a good outboard motor makes. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. And so uh, basically when my dad saw the motor taken apart, uh, then that started his own like uh, inboard motor running in a rattling way. And... Uh, then he was, uh, you know, then eventually the, the clock started ticking and then it's like, okay, when is, you know, when is this going to be, is this ever going to be fixed? Uh, is it going to, oh, you know, a dance? Uh, and now meanwhile, from Billy's perspective, I don't know because, uh, but he, he took it apart. He was, pro he was genuinely going to fix it. And maybe he was learning how to fix it or maybe he took on too big a job or maybe it would have eventually gotten fixed. I don't know. I mean, I know it probably had to get brought to a repair shop, but that's not the important part of the story, Brad, is I want you to picture all of the pieces. Uh, Scooter, are you saying I'm Billy? Brad, you're getting way ahead of yourself, uh, so far ahead of yourself. Uh, so, but just picture that tarp with uh, thousands of parts from an upboard motor. Pretty nice. Uh, it was a beautiful summer day. There's grass around it. Uh, uh, but that's a lot of parts, and if you just look at one of those parts, you say, this is where it becomes a little mermaid thing, right? And, and we could even use that as, like, a in-world metaphor. Now, imagine, it like, a, 
a- Ariel has her sea legs right, or earth legs, and she's still friends with uh, whatever that bird's name was. Uh, maybe I'll remember it. Scuttle, I think. Yep, yeah, Scuttle. And situationally, maybe maybe Ariel and Eric and Scuttle and uh, Fival or whoever else, they live down the street. Uh, you know, Ariel, like, the movie was almost in real time. Like, Ariel and Eric got married, but, you know, Ar- Ariel's still uh, a new person in our world, right? Okay, Scooter, I'm with you. So, just like in the movie, if... Uh, Ariel and Scuttle were walking. He said, "Hey, Ariel, what's up?" Uh, still, you, you, you. I mean, I guess my first thing would be it would be more subtle than this. It'd be like, "So, what's the sitch with you and Prince Eric? Uh, he travels a lot, huh, for work?" Well, he is a prince. Uh, yeah, uh, and his dog chases around poor Scuttle all the time. Well, and the Scuttle would probably say, "No, actually, a dog." And I say, "Okay, anyway." Geez, Ariel, uh, good to see you. Scooter, you really are a good friend. And then I would sigh. And then Ariel would say, huh, what's, Scuttle, what is all this stuff here? And they would go through the parts of the outboard motor and talk about them. You know, Scuttle would pick something up and it would be totally, you know, and no one knows, like, I haven't written any Scuttle fan fiction yet, so who knows what's going on with Scuttle? Is Scuttle, like, just, uh, is Scuttle, like, living in a fantasy world? Is Scuttle just make, like, is, like, uh, does Scuttle, I guess the question at this point would be, does Scuttle believe what Scuttle's saying or not? And, it, but it, for, I guess for this example, it doesn't really matter is that Scuttle would be identifying all these parts and saying this is what it does. Uh, Scooter, are you saying I'm Scuttle? Well, Brad, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, you, you could be Billy. You could be maybe maybe the AI. But then Ariel's there saying, huh, like, uh, what, tell me more. What? So I guess what I'm, my point is, I think I had a third point that I forgot about, though, huh? Uh, Scooter, your third point was talking about your phone. Okay, so let's think about how to empower this. So I, I don't think I think you're um, you're missing. You're you're saying that this big part must be. You know, I think you are a little bit of. You're pulling a little bit of a scuttle, and it, I can see how. Um, in, okay, here's another topic to to, to discuss on this subject. Brad is. Uh, now, I guess the reason my brow is so furrowed is it is something I think about a lot. Is, uh, well, geez, like, is the podcast just uh, that one part, the majority, what you're saying? And then I would say, well, would I want to just do that all the time? Because it still would be a lot of work, even if it didn't take all of the pre production of like writing things or preparing things or taking notes. Uh, or all of the craftsmanship that I, I believe that goes into the beginning, the pre pre show part of things. Like even if so, even if that was delusional, like I'm scuttle in this situ- in this model, and I'm believing what I'm saying. I'm saying, oh, this really is a Fuseldorf uh, Schneiser, and uh, that you know that's what you, you use it you know to uh, open your nostrils more. Uh, like, I guess I would say, doesn't that bring Scuttle, like, hmm, I guess this Scuttle's a probably a bad example in this situation. But I'd say, I don't think this, I think, like, the inherent work, the crafts that goes into making a podcast uh, is also what makes it sustainable. Even though it makes it a lot more work, the work, uh, in some sense, generates the sustainability of the show. Scooter, I hear what you're saying, but we're looking to stream. I guess we're looking to streamline what you're doing and make it scalable. Oh boy, did you just say scalable, huh? Oh boy, so that's where we're at. Uh, okay, well let's. Uh, oh, so you're saying? Uh, well, I guess scalable would be like row oars, and so you'd say. So okay, let's just say yes, Brad. Let's you and I. Hey, Ariel, would you like to join me and Brad for a boat ride with oars? No, you're going to go home and look out the window and wonder, okay, great. Think about Prince Eric's hair and eyes for a while. 
Scuttle, uh, why don't you keep Ariel company? Because I think you and I are two birds of a feather, right? Uh, I'll see you later. So we would be streamlined in this rowboat uh, with the, just these oars, Brad. So a streamlined version of the show, I see what you're saying, would focus... Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to give you another secret, Brad. And then maybe you've done enough research that this isn't going to blow your mind. And a regular listener would know all this, uh, is that boredom, when I say the show's bored, I guess you build a whole industry on boredom, so you probably know more about it than I do. But for me, boredom is an entry point, right? And it always has been since the start of the show, uh, because I want the show to be... Uh, uh, feel accessible and not intimidating and welcoming. And if it was more high minded, I think, uh, in some sense, uh, it might feel like, whoa, whoa, what's it like? Uh, I'm gonna, I spin these fantastical tales of, uh, go- like a goofy would be another good or nonsense. Like, uh, like, uh, you say, what's Scooter's main things? Nonsense, goofiness, uh, tangential, those like, uh, going off topic, uh, thinking about grape ape, even like, here's a question, Brad, now that we're out in this rowboat and it's warm and I'll do the paddling, uh, cause I gotta get my, I gotta get my, you know, I gotta get, uh, in better shape than Prince Eric, hopefully. I don't think that's happening, but. Uh, is, uh, oh, oh, his grape ape, you think grape ape was ever in a, on a grape, like, I think grape ape predated, uh, juice boxes, but I was just thinking I'd love a juice box with grape ape on it. It said, you know, grape ape, juice box. Okay, Brad. So, um, where was I? Uh, I think I was going to make a point and then I forgot what it was. A, which is another, oh, so putting, oh, we're going to streamline things. I don't know, Brad, do, do you remember what I was talking about? Scooter, I think you were going to reveal what, oh, boredom, Scooter. You were, oh, so boredom is an entry point for the show. Not, it is kind of like a, a portion of what works, uh, but it's not the primary thing. It's more like, oh, you're going to bore me to sleep. I think I can kind of understand that. And that doesn't feel super in, in, uh, intimidating or it doesn't sound like a big obligation for me, the listener. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, I, I can, I can, I'll, I can check that out. So it's a podcast where a dude bores you to sleep. Now, when people talk about it interpersonally, they think it's still a good entry point to say, because people, some people say you're so boring and I say, great, that's like, that's perfect. But then some listeners say, well, you're not boring. They say, well, boredom is in the toolkit. It's a big, one of the bigger tools in the toolkit. I guess that's the point I was trying to make, Brad. But it's not the only tool. But when people say, did you bring your toolkit? You, you, you know, if you're like a super journeyman, you're fixing outboard motors. Now, maybe that's all Billy showed up with because that's what he had a socket set and some pliers and maybe a couple other things. Uh, and the journey person, outboard motor repair person, uh, might say, okay, well, I got the tensile 9 or 40 and, you know, stuff that, you know, maybe that sounds like Scuttle would be saying it, but real. So I, I guess, like, uh, you can board a win. Clearly, you've proven it, Brad, because you have a society of uh, enrichers or whatever. But I guess I just wanted to say that... Uh, I don't think it's a primary, like, like, I think it's like when you, when you think about building, so when we think about streamlining it, Scooter, can I, uh, re, okay, go ahead, Brad. I'm glad you, you, you're, Brad, you're reminding me more. Have you ever met Stan? Uh, Scooter, we've been a- analyzed to Stan. The, Stan's clearly a, uh, a projection of, uh, one of the inner children that lives within you. Okay, well, you, you've you been wrong before, Brad, but, like, uh, no, you know, I'm not, I just, uh, it's possible, though. Okay, Scooter, I just wanted, so if we were taking the tenets of making a, a, a podcast, a bore-to-win podcast, a podcast to put people to sleep, uh, a boredom would be one of the, if, uh, Scooter, you know what's always efficient is having five pillars. 
or five keystones of uh, sleep podcast creation, whether it's corporate, whether it's funded by, by VCs, or whether it's, uh, you know, simply, you know, solo, solo pron, members of our society, uh, Scooter, is, uh, so boredom could be one of the five. Could we have tenants instead? What about tent poles? Scooter, normally there's only one tent pole at the center of the tent. That's why it's called a tent pole movie. Okay, but usually in the summer there's like three tent pole movies, right? Uh, but Scooter, I'm shooting for five. Okay, well, I'll just be honest with you, like, because since this is my kind of, my, uh, for, I don't want to forte you, but, uh, like, you know, w- will you let me forte? I'm just kidding, Brad. Uh, just to be efficient. Uh, so boredom is one of the five keystones. Let's say, let's go with that. Okay, Scooter. I'm, not, I'm a little bit wondering how we are going to get to, we'll get through it together, Brad. I'm here to help, uh. So you'd say boredom is one of the keystones, uh, and I believe that, and your AI analyzed it uh, and said boredom. And, Brad, let me give you two other keystones that I know you got right in your back pocket uh, is uh, tone and pacing, right? So you have boredom, you have tone, and you have pacing. And I would say, okay, well, uh, if you, now you have to have five keystones, huh? And the keystones all have to be the same. Now, these are your keystones, not mine. I'm just going to be clear. Yeah, Scooter, we, we kind of uh, have ascertained through our analysis that, yes, uh, tone and pacing are the uh, primary keystones along with boredom. And if we were creating our own course, we'd base it just on those uh, three keystones. But for sales-based marketing purposes uh, in A-B testing, uh, five keystone-based products or five pillar products uh, sell better than three pillar products. Yeah, I think people want to go on a journey. They want to have a little bit more uh, than a mouthful. Uh, and so I think that's like would be your fourth pillar, which we could talk about the other pillars, which would be being around for people, uh, Brad. It's really uh, like a scooter. I don't know if that could quite fit as a keystone, being around. Okay, being present, uh, being in there. And that's a summary of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the tone and the pacing come through that. The actual uh, boredom, as you would say it, is a, 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 a spirit. Uh, it's almost like a spirit, not a spiritual boredom in the... Uh, uh, the religious or faith sense, but in the spirit, like the boredom, the spirit of the boredom is impacted. Uh, but I already, Brad, believe it or not, I just forgot what I was talking about mid-sentence. Uh, Scooter, you're talking about the fourth pillar, uh, which you said was being, being, being around. Yeah, so the kind of the, like, uh, this might be the only, I guess maybe that's the keystone, is really just being there for the person listening. You're there to keep them company with some silly boredom-based silliness, with calm, soothing tone and easy pace uh, that you're always trying to pay attention for. Maybe sometimes you got to redial it back in. Uh, and but, but that's the main thing, Brad, is you say, okay, you could have a pace. You could have it, but, but being there it consumes like the release schedule. Uh the uh, the time of the episodes, the content, the presentation. Yeah, but it's really just about being there uh, for for the per- one person that's listening, Brad. Okay, Scooter, I'm writing all of this down. So this is very very good. Uh, but again, I don't quite know. Uh, in a course, uh, Scooter, usually it's better to have one word: boredom, uh, pacing, tone. And being, did you ever see the movie being, is it being there? Is that the name of the movie with Chauncey the Gardener? Uh, Scooter, we were like, uh, we got to get to the fifth tenants. And also I have a bunch of other stuff uh, uh, to present uh, as part of this uh, seminar. Okay. Well, honestly, I think you helped me a lot, Brad, because it's like, uh, again, for me, paying attention to those things. I didn't realize quite they're interconnected this until I was like speaking to you about it. And I knew they were interconnected. 
but now I can actually, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, Brad, but I could feel the interconnectedness between the tone, the pacing, the being there, and the kind of being bored, you know, bored, you know, whatever. I don't know if that's a keystone, though, Brad. It's a tool in the toolbox, but we're just going to use your words because this is your time. And, uh, like, uh, okay, what's the last one, Brad? Because you, I know you're you're delaying, so I have a feeling you have a feeling that I'm not going to appreciate the last uh, keystone. Okay, Scooter. Yeah, Scooter, you're sitting down, and but this is just a true Scooter. It's uh, being, being first. Uh, uh, and we just call it arrival. But really, so because I guess I was stuck with being there. It's the reason you really your success is due to the fact that you were. Uh, well, again, we won't talk about that part, Scooter. Yeah, no, I could see how you totally feel that way, Brad. That's a very common theme. So don't worry about it. Uh, like uh, I'm a bit like Brand. You say, okay, I I, I get it. Like uh, that most of the things this the, the, just that the podcast was the first one of its kind, right? Right, Scooter, and a lot of your. Uh, a lot of it, like, uh, but we have an empowering version of that message. That's why we call it, uh, are you, Brad, are you doing some visioneering? Is that what you're doing? I guess so, Scooter, but we call it a rival. Okay, I just want to dissuade you of a couple points, so just to, just to ensure, to empower your message, uh, is like, so the podcast is not new. It, the idea wasn't new. It's been around for millions, I mean, not millions of years, but, uh, People are telling each other stories like this for for all of time, and so I don't know necessarily that that uh, like uh, that really is an empowering message for anyone else. You, you say it's kind of like you're saying, well, most of Scooter's success can be attributed to that uh, being boring and being early, and you're saying, and I, and I could totally see why you you could perceive that, especially when you're working with AI. So I'm not, it doesn't bother me at all, but I do want to just make sure like, uh, if you're going to be empowering other people that, uh, I'm, I'm interested, uh, to know how you would do that. Uh, Scooter, so we're saying an arrival, instead of replicating you, because that's not possible, would be an arrival. So we're, we're encouraging uh, them to arrive now great with our enterprise customers we could launch an entire plan to do that and you know with marketing and pr and ad spend and that could very easily scales with budget scooter and we can arrive uh, and that can arrive on various platforms everywhere now for the individuals that's in our society what we'll do is uh, they'll help one another arrive and uh, that uh, that will help them uh, Okay, well, I don't know about that, but, but like, here's the thing. Uh, hmm, I'm trying to help you, Brad, without it. I don't want to invalidate anything you're saying because everything you're saying is valid and definitely valid to you. I just don't know, like, I say, okay, if we're going to build this wall here with that as a keystone or we're building an arch or whatever, I'm not totally confident we should be walking under that one. You know, the other ones I could see... Kind of so, um, like let's let's see if we can find our way there. So here we are. Welcome everybody. Uh, this is the abbreviated bore to win bore pod bore to podcast to win seminar. I'm here with uh, my support staff, Brad Bradderson. Say hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. Oh, you're to learn. You're quick, boy. Boy, you're good, Brad. And we're here to present you, uh, to, to set you, which is a little, you know, you heard our, our practice podcast there. And we're here to uh, set you on the path uh, to health, wealth, and happiness through boredom and through boring podcasting. And you're probably here because you want to unlock uh, the secrets to health, wealth, and happiness. Uh, good hair, shiny teeth, uh and all the other things that, uh, Brad, you know, life enrichment, uh, as Brad says. And and we want to help you here. And Brad's working on a program for the members of the Enrichment Society. 
uh, Keystones and Tenants of Boring Podcasting, you know, the working title. And, you know, we've kind of gone through some of the important tenants there. It's being boring, and uh, uh, that would be your content model. And uh, Brad says that's somewhat, uh, uh, it, it, it's a equally, it's a one-fifth of the, the road to success, to health, to wealth, to happiness. And finding finding content that's boring uh, and uninteresting, like uh, according to the Boredom Institute, which preaches boredom first, uh, it's a boredom first thing, is uh, one of the keystones of their program that I'm just summarizing uh, because I, I want to just clarify everything for them. Uh, second, uh, tenant and keystone is uh, pacing. Uh, which I guess you have now. Here's the thing: you have to discover it through time, uh, because you have to discover a pacing that's sustainable for you and the listener, and a tone, a tone uh, that is, uh, you know, that that works for the listener and that works. Uh, and and normally, I would put pacing and tone in their own keystones, but because of A/B testing, uh, Brad has separated those out. And this is a freebie that I'm giving to Brad and the Institute. It's the fourth keystone is presence. Uh, you're here. Uh, you're here. You're here in your situation to bore to win. Uh, you're a winner, or you're you want to win. You want to win through boredom, and you want to unlock the secrets to health, wealth, and happiness through boring others. Uh, and you want to be present for that. You want to enjoy every minute and. If you're enjoying every minute of uh, the tone and the pacing, we'll follow that in the content. Uh, so you want to remember that you're going to be there and you're going to be present uh, for those. Uh, uh, I, I guess I do have to ask Brad a clarifying question before we move on to the fourth keystone, which I for, forgot. Uh, and now I'm almost going to forget my question, Brad. Oh, Brad. So here's a question. So the people that are be doing the seminar, so the enterprise uh, customers are yours. They're like a business, right? So they say, hey, we want to do a sleep podcast or put, put people to sleep uh, to promote our product, right? Let's go to brand. We're looking to promote, you know, promote. Okay, so yeah, their brand or whatever. Okay, I get that. I could see that. Totally reasonable expectations and makes total sense, right, uh, that uh, you'd want to do that. Totally understandable. And so, okay, so that's one thing. So then, uh, so you're, uh, okay, so that would be, I guess, oh, so what about the non-enterprise customers? They can see the enterprise customers, you know, it's uh, clear as a day. They say, hey, we make this, like, uh, I mean, I guess some, I can't see why it's not clear as day. Like Trader Joe's say, okay, you make, why don't you make a podcast about your products to put people, instead, just do it on my show. Uh, but like, uh, don't, they say, well, we don't want to, but our brand is not boredom. Can you explain that to me, Brad? The scooter, you could enroll in the, uh, okay, you got me. You, you are a good co-host, Brad. Uh, we do have to tie all this together, though. I, for, the fourth t- the tenant was arrival. So here's what we, when we talk about arrival at the Boredom Institute, we talk, it's, uh, Brad means making a splash, uh, getting the chatter going, getting the word of mouth going. And I would say I'd bring it back to the presence. Uh, and remember, now Brad was bringing up one of my, you know, one of my internal emotional children, uh, that they may have discovered at the Boredom Institute, uh, along with like uh, my emotional marketer Brad, uh, is uh, uh, now the presence uh, and the arrival. Uh, do you, you you want to be present for your arrival? You want to be present for your the train on the journey before the arrival, and the arrival at the station. And so if you're an individual or a brand, like being aware of uh, what your interests are, who you are, and uh, why you're on this journey, where you're going, maybe you don't even know that 100% or what your current destination is, where you've come from and what you've seen on the way, will inform all of those other keystones. Uh, So when you're thinking about it, uh, 
Uh, more think about that if it was in slow motion and you're dropping a pebble and the ripples uh, heading outward uh, in very slow motion, uh, as if time was slowed down, those ripples uh, floating away from the pebble. Uh, don't forget those uh, ripples, and then don't forget about Kiva. Go back in time. Where did you pick the pebble up from? Why did you choose that pedal? pebble? Maybe you dropped a pedal in there from a bike or from a flower. And uh, what did it feel like in your hand? Uh, what did it make you, what did it remind you of? What did the air smell like? And not the specific details. Uh, remember, you have your own unique window. Uh, you look through in the world, your own unique makeup. And I guess this is scalable for brands in some sense, is, uh, or brands, you know, or brand. You know, but I don't know, brand doesn't have its own brand. I guess raisin brand is the closest thing. But uh, so when you think about your rival, uh, think about you and who you are, uh, and that'll help the, the uniqueness of your 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 your, uh, your delivery, and it'll inform all those other things. And also, it, you know, just when you think about the health, wealth, and happiness that the institute guarantees, uh, you you think about uh, the, the the opportunity to get to know yourself better, and uh, to 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 uh, find your voice. Uh, I think all of those keystones that Brad and the institute have invented are really about finding your voice. Uh, and maybe you're finding the boring intonation of your voice, and maybe that is part of your journey there, uh, part of your discovery, and you know, part of what, what you're trying to find. Or, you know, if you're part of a team, you know, you've got a job, you've got to pay the bills, I get it. Uh, you know, think about that. Uh, and I would say, with working with Brad's notes here, I think the last one is action. And, you know, that's just a buzzy way to make it sound as I re-summarize everything. Now, the action for this podcast, uh, it, and you say, okay, well, Brad or Brand or anything else, you say, well, metaphorically, what is the action? Like, how can we present it in a way that's clear and understandable? And I would say it's a sense of holding, hold, holding, and then you say, well, give me some more scoots. I need to, you know, I need to put this on a bumper sticker. And you see, really, part of your marketing plan is bumper stickers. So sign me up. Uh, no, no, and a bill. Okay, I'll hold you in the palm of my hand is a term uh, I've heard. Maybe uh, holding you in my arms. You know, you know, like a, a pet or a, a child. Uh, maybe it's just holding your hands, uh, holding your palms of your. I find that very comforting myself. Is uh, holding my hands in the palms of my hands. And I'm doing it now. And when I do that, it makes me sit in a way that I'm leaning in to listen, even though I'm doing the talking, that I'm saying, oh, I'm kind of here. Like, I'm talking in a listening sense to say, wow, you can't sleep. Uh, oof, wow, I wish you could. Like, maybe I could do this to help you sleep. Uh, it kind of always uh, follows a suit, uh, is the that's the action part of the plan, and I, I think really like you like I talk about on the podcast is like kissing your shoulders or yeah holding your hands or maybe rubbing your thumbs together, or uh, I don't know like uh, some people like to hold their open palm on their sternum and say hey I'm here for you because maybe just just the action for starting is. Uh, kind of doing that for yourself to say, well, and then maybe it's, uh, maybe there's a other keystone. It's a choice. Uh, you'd say, huh, do I like, is this, this making a sleep podcast for me? Or is it, do I want to make a podcast about something else or what's interesting to me? Uh, uh, and then holding yourself and seeing it as a journey of discovery I don't know. So maybe that's not a good one, Brad. But uh, I think actions you could you could, you could reuse that. Any well, oh, Brad's asleep. Uh, great news, everybody. Still got it. Uh, so I don't know. I, I I like had fun with Brad, and I can totally see Brad's points and the desire to kind of uh, spread what I'm doing around and through other channels and other mediums and uh, 
uh, you know, for, for other things. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that Brad came to me and like, uh, gave me the overview and you'd say, well, geez, what is it? Is it an outboard motor? What is it like, like when the outboard motor is taken apart and, and looking at stuff like this with Brad, it always gives me the opportunity to look at the podcast in a closer way. And you know, really that is the important thing is you, uh, and kind of your dilemma and the fact that I can relate to it, uh, at least that's what's important to me to say, huh, I don't know exactly what that is like, but I know, like, I've, uh, huh, that really sounds tough. Uh, let me be here and let me see if my tone and my pacing and my content, uh, and my presence, uh, my actions can, can reflect that fact, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm not perfect like Brad, Brad never said that, but you know, the, the AI probably said, uh, they, and I say, well, yeah, that probably confuses the AI a bit that it's, uh, you know, the imperfections in the podcast, maybe what will make you work too. Uh, but when I think about those are the things, or maybe those are my favorite things about the podcast works, uh, that you let me in uh, to try to help, uh, and then I can try uh, to be here to keep you company and to take your mind off stuff or not, uh, just to be be across the room or wherever I am. And sure, that's replicable. Sure, it's, I guess, probably scalable for Brad. Uh, uh, but uh, it's also this individual thing in some way. And then it's not it's the opposite of that. Uh, so thanks for letting me in. Uh, time after time or whatever, and I'm really glad. I really appreciate it, uh, and I hope uh, we could keep doing this. Uh, uh, this was a little bit different. Uh, I gave Brad Brad's a lot of time, and if you're interested in anything they're doing there, uh, maybe one day they'll launch a page, uh, the Bordewin Institute. Uh, thanks, everybody, and good night. I want to thank some of the people that reviewed the podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts recently. Uh, Ty31, the OG is Sleep Podcast. Uh, coming from someone who used to lie in bed and couldn't sleep, uh, this is a true gem. I'm forever grateful I found this podcast because sleeping is a beautiful thing when you can do it. His soft tone, his little jokes about nothing are absolutely the best. I fell asleep within 20 minutes, uh, no matter the time of day. Uh, Brooklyn EM from Canada. Says the podcast is H O R R I B L E. It can't sleep and his talking is keeping me up. So I think they, they just accidentally thought the podcast was something else because they talk about a sound machine. Uh, Scoot fan number one, who's David, age nine, says, This is wild. Podcast is better than Disney World. Uh, had our time falling asleep till I found this. Smiley face, smiley, smiley face. Thank you so much, Scooter. Thanks, David. Awesome app 35 from Canada likes the podcast. Holy grail of sleep, a lifesaver. Don't know what I, how I would have done this year. Very common, great comfort, uh, very effective uh, sleep tool. Uh, it's funny, this is going back and forth. Uh, Hedgy Potter uh, says reasons why this podcast is perfect. Uh, if, uh, before sleeping, I, I would stay up for hours without being able to even consider sleeping. Now I'm out without a light, like a like of light within a half hour. His voice is slightly more gravelly than Cecil's on Night Vale. Yeah, he sounds like he's speaking all in lowercase. He's my favorite boar bay. Uh, it's magic. I'm out within 30 minutes. Thank you. Uh, then someone from Canada, uh, Canada K says, uh, unapproved, one star. Do less bad words. Uh, uh, then from the UK... Da, Dania says, uh, simply amazing, so incredible. Uh, this person, skate uh, in X, uh, in six, co, 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 I don't know how to say their name, but it's all, it's a lot of letters. It's probably a code that I can't figure out. Uh, not scared to sleep anymore. Uh, I've had anxiety, uh, anxiety that caused insomnia. And uh, nothing helped. Uh, medita tried meditations, which kind of pressured, felt pressured. You know, they work for some people. Uh, 
My brother told me about this podcast. I was confused why I heard a deep man voice saying nice things coming from my brother's room at night. After listening, I realized how chill it is and no pressure to fall asleep. Funny and lighthearted. Great companion. Not trouble sleeping since I found this podcast. A blessing. Give it a few tries. Uh, thank you. Uh, Paula from New Zealand says, uh, comforting companion, faithful bedtime companion. Sometimes I sleep, sometimes I don't. Always chatting and uh, keeping me from feeling alone. Thanks, Scoots. Uh, one of a kind. Thanks, Paula. And Canon the, Canon the One uh, says, uh, surprisingly part of my daily happiness. I've been going through some transitions in the air, which causes stress, uh, and uh, this podcast has been a solace to my stresses and worries. Just crawl in bed and have a moment when all the, the dreading uh, scoots start talking and I smile. It sneaks up on you. How you feel loved like a reliable friendship more than a podcast. Thanks. So thanks everybody who reviewed the podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, Sleeping actually exists because of listeners who support this podcast. That's how it exists as a free show is we actually really rely on the people that support the show on Patreon and support our sponsors. Uh, those are the only ways we're able to bring you the podcast for free is through those people. So I really appreciate it if you're one of those people that supports the sponsors or supports the show and you're here right now. Thank you so much. Uh, also, the show grows by people like on Apple Podcasts, just spreading the word, their natural uh, like uh, reactions to the podcast. Uh, so thank you for that, everybody that does that. We're a proud member of Night Vale Presents. You can find all the amazing shows uh, that are part of the Night Vale Presents network at nightvalepresents.com, including uh, the great It Makes a Sound. Uh, like, uh, do you remember Wim Ferris? Because I, I do. Uh, and what one of the podcasts you can hear it in my voice uh is you could binge it. The whole first season's out there. There's also the uh, It Makes a Sound album that you can get as part of their Patreon. I think it may be also available on streaming services and stuff like that. Uh, check it out uh, in your podcast app of choice, It Makes a Sound, or on nightvalepresents.com. We're also a member of PRX, uh, and really like another huge uh, supporter of the show. Really, uh, PRX and the staff at PRX really goes out of their way to support the podcast and, and help to keep it free uh, along with the staff at Nightfield Presents. So it really, I, I literally couldn't, without the listener support and the, the support of uh, other professionals in the podcast, uh, you know, and, and, and friends of the show, uh, could, podcast couldn't exist. So thanks to everybody at PRX or proud member at PRX. You can see everything they're doing at prx.org. And that's it. There's a lot of other, uh, a lot of other cozy stuff here. So uh, let me tuck in. Uh, thanks so much, and good night.